Welcome to Collecting Chaos. It's about 3 a.m. on November 2nd. Delco decided it was time for me to get up. Despite the fact that I have don't work today. And I decided, since I didn't have a video ready, and it is Monday and I'm supposed to do a, drop a video today, I should go ahead and make one. These are talking points. Um, and, uh... I'm, I've got some comics I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm not going to go deep into them. I may or may not open them up. Some of them are still in bags. I may take them out of the bags and boards. I may not. Uh, but I've been thinking about the beginning collector and what... What they might be thinking, you know. Uh, why are they wanting to collect? And, and they wrote up some notes and I figured I'd just go ahead and do a video on it and like I said I'll show some comics while I'm at it uh, these are going to be all different types all different genres but basically V and W titles meaning they start with a little V they start with a little W so if you want to see the comics I want to pick up and listen to my droning voice and hear what I have to say about beginning and collecting and some of this applies to uh, more experienced collectors as well I think uh, keep watching yeah my hands he missed my hands <laughs> uh, so why do you want to collect comics is it uh, for nostalgia? Did you read comics when you were younger and you decided, uh, hey, that might be neat. Let's let's do that. Let's 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 read some comic books. Let's uh, get into it. Or is it curiosity? You, you saw maybe you saw a movie and you wanted to know more about that character in the movie. And you want to dig a little deeper, you found out that the character was uh, from comic books and figured you'd go ahead and give it a try and check it out. Or, did you see something on the news about how somebody sold a comic book for thousands of dollars? <laughs> and you know, comic books aren't that expensive, so you want to get in on that, you know, investment. Maybe you want to invest in comics. Or, peer pressure. Your friends collect comic books and you kind of feel left out. But you don't want to be left out. You want to get in on that. So, you just want to collect comics because all your friends are doing it. That might be the worst reason to start. But then again, in a way... In my teens, that's why I started. My friends collected comic books, so I figured I would too. Most of them got out of it uh, in their 20s, early 20s. But here I am in my 60s, and not only do I still collect them, they're a big part of my life. Or, maybe you just like to look at the cool pictures. Maybe you just want to want to get them for the art. Now, there's nothing really wrong with any of those reasons. Um, probably the worst two, if I had to label two, would be uh, investment and peer pressure. Which brings me to my next subject. Why do you want... Or what kind of comics do you want to collect? Do you like superhero? War comics? Funnies? No, funny. When I say funnies, 
I'm talking Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, Archie to an extent. Uh, there's a lot of different funny comics. Uh, basically comics that make you laugh. They don't make you think real a whole lot. They just make you laugh. That's, uh, that's what I mean by funnies. Arthur's the movie, book, video game tie-ins, you know, some, some of the comics that are based on movies and books and games. Uh, I know uh, Magic the Gathering had a series of comics, and I think they've started doing them again. Uh, let's see what else... Uh, Warhammer 40k had a series of comics. Warhammer, I think, had a series of comics for a while. Uh, there's Mario Brothers comics. So, yeah, there's uh, a lot of different ones out there. Some of these bags are really old. This one is so yellow, I'm surprised you can see the comic. Maybe you like westerns. There's a lot of Western comics out there. Most of them are older. I don't think anybody's really publishing Western comics right now, which is a shame. Because there's a lot of cool stories you can do with Westerns. Uh, horror. The horror genre is big. There's a lot of different horror comics uh, from all different uh, time frames. Right now, the 70s horror comics are really coming in strong. But, of course, the pre-code horror of the early 50s, those are perennials. Those are always good. Very expensive, but good. Or maybe you like the romance comics. Romance comics has some really good artwork. Not too crazy about the stories, but then they're not, they weren't aimed at my gender. But they have their own people that like to collect them. I like to collect them because... They're hard to find. It's the only reason I like them is they're hard to find, especially in good condition. Where can you get comics? That's my third point. Where can you get them? You can find them just about anywhere. You can find them in flea markets. You can find them in yard sales. You can get them online, obviously. There's a lot of different places to sell comic books online. Not just eBay, but uh, a lot of comic shops have their online presence. Uh, of course, you can go to comic book stores. Sometimes you can find them in antique stores. And even thrift stores will have them occasionally. So there's a lot of different uh, places that you can buy comics. My battery died, so I had to take a little break. And But that was kind of a good thing, is it gave me a chance to take the comics out of bags. Uh, so we'll continue on. Uh, how much should you spend on a comic? Well, the average price of a new comic is around $5. So I would say you want to try to pay that or below. So, starting out, any comics you buy, you want to pay $5 or less, if possible. Now, there are just new comics that cost more. That's all there is to it. Uh, I pay an average of between $7 and $8 for a lot of the ones that I get, because that's what the publisher charges. I like the comics enough that I'm going to keep buying them. I'm not going to stop getting them. But you decide what you can afford to spend each week on comics. And you can split that between new and old comics. So let's say there's two comics you want that cost $15 total that are new. Well, go over to the back issue bin if they have them at your local store. And uh, see if you can find like 12 to 14 
dollar comics. Comics that are only going to cost you a buck a piece. Now you just bought 16 comics for $30 rather than two comics for $8. And that brings the total price down to about $2 a piece, which is palatable. I mean, that's, that's, we can live with that. Too bad about that chunk missing out of it. But whatever you set your limit to, don't spend over that amount, ever. Just don't do it. And now I'm going to turn around and uh, change that. Uh, basically, you don't want to ever spend over that. You want now if you spend less, that's okay. Take that money that's excess. Say your limit is thirty dollars and you only spent twenty. Take that ten dollars and put it away. Because that. $10 you can still spend on comics because it's part of your budget but you put it in a fund that's reserved for collecting supplies maybe you want to go and use all mylar because you saw me putting comics with mylar and you like the way they look or maybe you want to buy a really expensive comic but can't afford it you can take that money that's left over from your budget and uh, it'll build up over time and you can maybe buy that more expensive comic. This one has a lot of a lot of wrinkles in it. Looks like it and a lot of yeah, this one is in bad shape, but that's okay. Weird War was a good comic. This combines two zom genres, really, war and horror. And of course, war is our, always a horror comic of its own, even in reality. The main thing to remember, you should be in control of your collection's finances. I do not let your collection control your finances. And that sounds like a funny thing to say, I think, but really it isn't. Let's say uh, you see a great deal on a key issue that's normally like three four hundred dollars but your local store only has it for two hundred and you've got the money to buy it it's not a problem you got the money but your electric bill is 198 dollars and it's due anytime pay your electric bill I can't stress that enough. Pay your bills first before comics. Comics are not that important. You might think they are. I know I sometimes think they are. But I guarantee nearly 100% that that comic shop owner that wants to sell that comic will probably be willing to take payments on it once he, he learns to trust you. If you say, hey, if I give you $50 to, to hold that comic, or I give you my whole $30 comic budget for this week, will you hold that comic and I'll, I'll make payments on it? He'll probably do it. Hundred percent, he will not come turn off your electricity if you don't pay him. On the other hand, well, that's kind of neat. They have a questionnaire in here and somebody filled it out. Somebody age 14 filled it out. They never sent it in, but they filled it out. That's kind of cool. It's a... Uh... <laughs> because if this was a mint comic, but it was filled out like that, that would take it down from mint to, you know, something less. I just thought I'd throw that in. Yeah, they're not going to turn off, your, your comic shop owner is not going to come turn off your electricity bill. Or your electricity because you didn't pay your, your bill. Or because you didn't make a payment. <laughs> the electric company definitely will. 
Which brings me to my next one. Now that you've got a bunch of comics, how, how do you take care of them? How do you store them? I gotta change my notes here. I got page and page and page of notes. Well, let's face it. Let's be real here for a second. Very few of us can afford a humidity and temperature controlled environment for our comics. And that's really what it takes to take care of them 100% properly. But because so few of us can afford that environment, we need to look at less expensive alternatives. So try to keep your comics in a cool, dark place. If you don't have a big collection, a closet is as close to an ideal place as the average starting out collector is going to get. Places to avoid are attics, which spell check to attacks, <laughs> but that's pretty appropriate when you think it, about it. And basements, where the temperature and humidity can vary wildly and where pests can get to your books. Mice, insects, and other vermin can be devastating to a collection. Even if you put them in bags and boards, they can still get to them. There are a variety of things you can store comics in that range from manila file folders, which are acid-free, by the way. One comic per folder, please. And probably the east, least expensive thing you can use to archival slabs and when I say archival slabs uh, really the only people that, that uh, offer archival type slabs are CBCS uh, because of the type of inner plastic they use to can encase the comic it's the same thing they use in museums which makes them archivally safe uh, but that's, you know, going with the slabbed comics, that's also one of the most expensive ways you can do it. Most collectors just use polypropylene or polyethylene bags and an acid-free, they hope, board. Uh, most acid-free boards are just treated boards. And uh, here's an example of, of a backing board that I had in a comic for like 30 years and you can see it's yellowed over the top and not in the best shape there's another one this one's in a little better shape it's, again it was in the comic for about 30 years and you can see a white line up at the top or at least I can so uh, bags and boards that's what most people use uh, acid-free or treated backing board and they put them in cardboard boxes that are designed for comic books now some people buy these plastic comic vaults which are good I mean they're, you can't get much better than that personally I like putting my comics in uh, either four or two mil mylar sleeves with an acid-free backing board. I use the MyLite brand. Uh, simply because he's been making the MyLite sleeves longer than any, or Mylar sleeves longer than anyone. So I figured he knows what he's doing. And I store those, I like storing those in corrugated plastic bo comic boxes. Now don't think that I don't approve of professionally graded and slabbed comics. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that if that's the way you want to go. And I do own a few slabs. Occasionally one will come up on eBay or something and the price will be right for the condition that it's in. And I'll put a bid in it on it and sometimes I win sometimes I lose more often than not on those I lose because somebody will jump in at the last second and put in an absurd bid just to get above me and I don't care I mean I put in my bids 
If I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. It doesn't bother me. But as far as the uh, my everyday bags and boards, it's just or my everyday collection. It's just not something that I'm into. Uh, it's they're fine. I like them, but I like being able to have my comics, open them, and read them. And yeah, I could read them online, but it's just not the same as holding a comic in your hand. So, you know. It's just not, not what I do. Uh, don't store your comics in direct sunlight. Sunlight is a source of ultraviolet light radiation. Wow, this is nasty. This needs some desperate love. Uh, tell you what, I'm going to uh, give this comic some love. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to uh, get that bad spine roll out of it because we all know how much I hate spine rolls. I'm going to reattach the centerfold and uh, I will show you this comic again in my intro video for Wednesday. So where was I? Oh yeah, <laughs> comic book killer. Ultraviolet radiation will destroy your comics. Ah, I wish I could get that out. I really have to figure out a way to get out the water stains on a comic because I could have so many nicer comics without the water stains. Ultraviolet radiation bleaches the color out of your comics and it does it quickly. Especially direct sunlight does it quickly. Uh, less than six months and you're going to have badly uh, bleached out comic. Another source of uh, ultraviolet radiation is fluorescent light tubes. Uh, and uh, the fluorescent bulbs those are the little curly Q tubes you don't see them as much as any anymore as people are going more and more into LEDs which is for me a preferred way of lighting uh, it doesn't provide as much ultraviolet radiation all light does provide a little bit but uh, LED I think provides the least amount If you have a window in your room, consider uh, dark curtains or maybe even blackout curtains. Uh, this will help to uh, keep down the amount of indirect sunlight. And indirect sunlight is just as bad as direct sunlight. It just takes a lot longer. It will still bleach out your comics. So you want to keep that down to a minimum. Displaying your collection. <laughs> Didn't expect me to pull out a werewolf by night number one, did you? I lost my shoe. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you spent two weeks of your paycheck on a comic book. You blew your budget. You're going to have trouble making ends meet. But it was a deal you couldn't pass up. But now you want to show it off. You want the world to know that you've got a good comic. But wait. I said you should keep your comics in a cool dark place. So how can you keep them in a cool dark place and show them off at the same time? Well, the obvious answer is you can't, but that's not exactly true because you absolutely can show them off and still keep them in a cool dark place. Take a high resolution photograph or, or scan. Pref scan would be preferred because you'll get a better resolution, better quality picture. Print it out. Slap that puppy in a frame put it on the wall. If it fades over time, print out another one and replace it. 
You can show off your best comic and never have to worry about it being hurt because it's always 100% safe. It's in your cool dark spot. You're still showing it off. It's still the same comic, but now you're not showing the actual comics. You're showing a picture of the actual comic. I love I love Plug's art. And there's another way to show your comics too. It costs a little more than a scanner. As a matter of fact, it costs more than a scanner <laughs> in the long run. Uh, but the second way, it uh, it'll give you a reasonable amount of protection against UV rays. You'll still need to change the comics periodically. And that's to get the comics graded and slabbed. Now, as of this writing, as of this video, I say writing because I originally wrote this out on a, uh, on, and printed it so that I could, you know, keep checking back on it. But as of this video, only two companies that offer protection against UV radiation with their slabs is CGC and CBCS. The other companies just don't provide quite as good a protection. Poly bags, Mylar, almost no protection at all. Poly bags, absolutely no protection. Um, mylar we're still on the fence but I it's starting to look and I check every now and then but it's starting to look like they don't offer much protection either so here's a question why do I collect comics not why do you collect them or why do you want to but why do I collect them Well, part of it's nostalgia. Part of it's because I like looking at the pretty pictures. And part of it's investment. I've been collecting off and on. For close to 55 years. What kind of comics do I collect? Well, you saw a little bit of them. You saw Wendy, and you saw Werewolf by Night, and you saw you saw horror, and you saw war, and you saw heroes. And I collect a wide variety. My taste is varied. I, you never know what I'm going to show. I mean, like I said, I, I collect a little bit of everything. You never know. Uh, that's why my channel's called Collecting Chaos. Because there's no rhyme or reason to what I collect. <laughs> where do I buy comics? Well, I buy them where I find them. Sometimes I'll go to a yard sale. If I don't see comic books at a yard sale or a garage sale, I'll ask them. Do you have any comic books? If if they're there to make money and they're there to make a little extra cash by getting rid of stuff and they have comic books and they're not collectors, chances are they're going to say, yeah, let me go get them. Then you can make an offer on them. Don't lowball them. Give them a reasonable offer. If they have a hundred dollar comic, don't try to get it for 10 cents. Offer them, you know, 30, 40 dollars for it. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a, that's a pretty good comic. I'll give you 30 bucks for it. Chances are they'll say, yeah. Of course, you can cheat them, and then they find out it's worth 100 later on, and they'll get pissed off, and next time you show up, they, they don't want to sell you shit. So, 
So yeah, your yard sales, garage sales, flea markets, comic shops, online, pretty much anywhere I find them, where I buy my comics. This one is stuck to the backing board. If anybody knows a good way to get that loose, let me know in the comments. Um, I'm thinking maybe Steam, but I don't know. And it's a really nice copy of Werewolf by Night 15, so I kind of like to keep it real nice by not just ripping it off. Uh, yeah, let me know. So yeah, I buy comics wherever I find them, because that's, that's the way I do it. If the price is right. If the price isn't right, I don't buy them. Or I'll try to negotiate. Sometimes my negotiations are sex successful. Sometimes I walk away. Don't be afraid to walk away. Sometimes when you walk away, they call you back. And work with. Good Lord, look how dirty this is. Where were these comics when I was looking for dirty comics? They were right here in my collection. I just didn't know they were here. <laughs> How much do I spend on comics? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to answer that. Uh, I'm not going to give you a dollar amount. What I will say is that I spend much less than I can afford to. And if I wanted to increase the amount I spend, I could do that without impacting my lifestyle or my ability to pay bills whatsoever. So there you have it. There's uh, my little video on collecting comics, uh, on why or how or should you or whatever it is. Uh, we didn't get through the whole box. We got through a big stack of it. I have a lot of them left. These are mostly Werewolf by Nights. We'll flip through them real quick for you. Uh, Western gunfighter that needs some love, but I'm not going to worry about it. What if Avengers had number three? Avengers had never been. What if number 21, Invisible Girl of the Fantastic Four, married the Submariner? Well, I'll go through these and show them off in the uh, in my next video, uh, which should drop on Wednesday. And of course, you'll see this again because I'll have this on the intro with whatever I've done to it. In the meantime, don't forget, always, 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 before handling your comics, before handling your collectibles, wash your hands. It's good for your comics, good for your collectibles, it's good for your health. And we'll see you next video. Bye.